Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks and another match of Beyond All Reason. Today, I've got a little bit of a special one for you. This is a match that we pulled directly from the stream, the live streams that we do every Tuesdays and Saturdays. We have some good fun, and we play with a bunch of really funky settings, and this is one of those such matches. It was one absolute hell of a match, and so I figured I would cast it and put it up here on the tube so that everybody here could take a look at it. So, without further ado, representing our blue team, it's none other than yours truly. This didn't last long as this lobby continued and better and better players continued to join, but at least for this very first match of the night, I was your team leader, Brightworks himself. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh yeah, that's right. We did have a, a player leave early on in the match too. Now representing the red team, Jamakis, otherwise known as Jamie Dodger, old time uh, supporter of the channel here. Very, very good uh, friend. Gonna be representing the red team here as an Armada commander, going into a vehicle bay. And I just know Jamakis is going to be upset about me casting this game. <laughs> so we had a player leave and uh, Fragnarok decided to go ahead and take over this player here. So you can see now moving ahead with three or well, two commanders, three start spots, essentially. Uh, but two commanders to their name going to be starting up a little bit of a vehicle bay over here on the contest of, oh, I should introduce the map here, too. Wow, that's a tremendous uh, box. Oh, man, it's possible to find the the limit for the map. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> Hyperion Shale. What a cool one. It's got this really interesting lava, this blue lava all over the place. Really, really cool to see. Now, as far as strategies go, one of the uh, one of the things that you'll see here is uh, there's a 6.2 metal extractor right here in the middle of the map. Going to be quite worth it to go for a contest over that 6.2 metal extractor. Definitely a little bit of a cheeky uh, little eco boost to capture that. Definitely more valuable than these 2.5s, but these 2.5s are all over the place. So you really could send your units all over and capture any of these these little uh, spots, these three metal extractor spots, and you're going to get a nice little boost to the economy here. Whether you uh, whether you decide to do that with bots or vehicles or whatever, I don't think it's really going to matter. I got a nice backline position here. Originally, uh, if I remember correctly, I think my plan was to go into air. Then I decided to go into tech. <laughs> Things kind of devolved pretty pretty rapidly, I would say. Nice aggression across the map here. Reed Suite sending in some ticks. Getting a nice little snipe on some of the forces of Mib over here. Very nice. Yeah, it's actually quite annoying. Shutting down some of those metal extractors. It's five metal down the drain right there. On a, uh, on a two metal per second map, <clears throat> losing two of your metal extractors, maybe not the end of the world, but 2.5. MIP is definitely going to be hurting for resources here just because of those ticks that managed to run away into the back line here. So that's quite nice. Get a little bit of damage done. Over here on the right-hand side, we can see Humblegar using that Legion commander that's enabled for this game mode. I'm trying to remember what settings were enabled. So one of the things that uh, we do all the time when it's on the stream, one of the settings that I like, I say we, right? Like it's not me controlling the settings. <laughs> one of the things that I always do uh, is I enable a little bit of a change of change of the economy setting. So the way it works is basically metal metal production and energy production are both left untouched. However, energy converters are much, much more efficient here. Let me see if I can find an example for you. Uh, anybody have any energy converters up yet? Doesn't look like it. Well, anyways, energy converters are twice as efficient. So for the same amount of energy, uh, which for a T1 energy converter is 70 energy per second, they're going to produce two metal per second rather than just one. Doesn't seem like a crazy change, but it does mean that commanders will spiral out of control very, very quickly. You're going to start making that crazy, crazy big money when you, uh, yeah, you start transitioning into those advanced solar panels, uh, or rather those uh, advanced energy converters, advanced solar panels on my mind right now. As you can tell, I'm going for a little bit of an advanced solar panel build here, trying to go into some sort of power production because the wind was looking uh, abysmal, trying to get it up and running. Very difficult to manage all that, but there's also a ton of rocks over here to help you get all that up and running. There's plenty of geothermals as well. Definitely really slacking on taking these metal extractors. There we go. Looks like I'll finally take the metal extractors with the commander. Meanwhile, Xeno Dragon doing an excellent job of capturing the entire middle of the map here. We've got LLTs holding on to the 6.2 metal per second metal extractor right now. Very, very nicely done. Putting out a whole bunch of work right now. Yeah. Drago Ken with an excellent little contest over here on the right hand side. We've got a whole bunch of these aggravators pushing in. Trying to contest the LLT set up by Sir Ice Cream 55, uh, otherwise known as Sir Ice Cream 55. We do have those railguns coming out, though. The uh, long-ranged railgun cannons, sort of a T1 sharpshooter, if you will. 
very, very powerful unit from the Legion faction. Excuse me, Legion faction. Boy, had some uh, dinner just a minute ago. I guess it's still fighting for its way back out. <laughs> Not sure exactly, uh, you know, what's going on there, but uh, hopefully, hopefully nothing bad happens. I guess this won't make it up on the YouTube if something bad happens. <laughs> Oh, this is a complicated battle on the front here. We've got the vehicles colliding with each other. Neither commander really wants to push in too far, though. If either of these armies is lost, then basically it's going to be two commanders down the drain right here. Mib trying to fight off all the aggravators over here. We do have a Centurion being used as... Ooh, frontline HP does go down, though. Those aggravators very, very dangerous. Reed Sweep moving the commander in. Maybe looking for a little bit of a backline stab here, trying to kill some of these units. Nice D-guns right there. It takes out some of the thugs that were coming out to reinforce from Oslex. Very nicely done. Making it complicated for the red team to stay on the fight right here. Yeah. Very, very tricky indeed. There you go. You can see I sacrificed the commander. Going for that T2 lab. By far not the uh, cleanest T2 transition that I think I've ever seen right here, but certainly not bad. Oh, there's some of those energy converters. So you can see producing two energy or two metal per second for 70 energy per second. Uh, otherwise known as 35 energy to one metal makes it extremely efficient though i mean 200 percent efficiency <laughs> very very good it means that you can spiral like crazy off of even a t1 economy if you just build a whole bunch of wind turbines and you build a whole bunch of energy converters you really can start to uh yeah send some significant firepower your enemy's way aggravator versus rocket duel over here little bit of a little bit of a back and forth some of those legion vehicles as well if you're a fan of the brightworks and you've tuned in for the streams you've definitely seen me use these before but for maybe anybody who's new to the game or hasn't seen legion a whole lot the uh, legion have their own whole set of vehicles here and so one of them is the artillery piece which is this little thing called the barrage fires a little spray of artillery project or of uh, napalm projectiles that land on the floor and do damage over time there's also the uh, Gatling here, which is just a assault tank. It's got a Gatling gun on the front of it. <laughs> Pretty simple, I guess, but uh, or self-explanatory, I guess, but very new in case you haven't seen it. And the railgun, which we've seen before, which fires one big burst of damage. Then there's a, a cacophony. That uh, beautiful Gatling gun mounted on a stick. There you go. This is my strategy. I decided instead of going into air, I was going to go into a whole bunch of uh, T2 constructors. So everybody got a T2 constructor there. Handing out T2 constructors left, right, and center, I feel like is probably the most useful way to, uh, yeah, get yourself into a, well, get your whole team really into a nice economic situation. There's those barrages, though, firing away that napalm. And man, do I love that. So cinematic. The napalm burning away. It's also great for zoning, though, because you really don't want to keep your units standing in that napalm. It doesn't feel like a lot just at first if it, you know, you're just happening to stand there. But it's about 2% off those thugs, 2% uh, or maybe some more off of those. Yeah, about 8% really off of those uh, aggravators here. Yeah, that really starts to do some damage. I believe it stacks as well. So if there's a whole bunch of napalm on the field, it's going to do even more damage. Very, very dangerous. It's different because it doesn't do all of its damage up, up in one big burst, right? So you have to kind of balance that. Firing on the retreat, very powerful. You can see I was leaning extremely heavily into the energy converters right here. Jamaka is also up to T2. Getting ready to step into a full-blown T2 economy. Getting those metal extractors up and running. You can see all of these metal extractors belonging to Jamaka's right now. It's going to be a grand total of 41 metal per second coming in for the Jamaka's economy. Uh, Jamaka is the, the tacker essentially for the red team, whereas I've got the... Uh, tech here for the blue and you can see he's almost doubling my economy here and amount of metal extractors on the front line jamak is also out here on the front holding the the front lines in tandem here with cage going up against frag the rock johnson a couple of sprinters running by trying to find whatever damage they can managed to get some metal extractors and a constructor here as well so that's always nice snagging a kill here and there Oh, missed the metal extractor. All right. <laughs> there we go. Breaking into the back line and doing a little bit of damage. Always good to see. Important to remember that you can do that. Always try and send some uh, units through where the weak points are. Shut down the enemy's defenses. A little bit of an APM stall there. Lingering one of those in the LLT field. Nice little bit of damage. 
Front line rapidly collapsing though. Xeno Dragon gets a pit bull up and running. It's firing away now. Doing a decent amount of damage. Shutting down a lot of these T1. Scuffing them up quite badly at the very least. Or trying to. <laughs> Hounds are now out as well. Gonna start pumping those out in mass here, trying to save the purple commander Xeno Dragon from complete destruction. That pit bull hitting so hard though. Doing an excellent job of shutting down a whole lot of these units right here. And every time that thing fires, it takes out a T1 bot. <laughs> Beautifully done. I don't think I've ever seen a pit bull with that much value out here. Tremendously, tremendously useful pit bull right there. Wow. 14 kills already. It's still going. Hound's firing away in their uh, close range mode, their, their Gauss cannon mode. Helps them hit these tanks, which move pretty quick here. Helps them hit basically anything that's mobile. Some excellent zoning right here, though, by the other commanders. Making sure to use those tanks to basically body block and keep all the, uh, yeah, all the sensitive stuff pulled away here. Couple of hounds. Still trying to fight their way through. Couple of grunts make it through as well. What a hero pit bull, though. 23 kills to that pit bull's name. Very, very nicely done. Manages to kill, I mean, just a never-ending sea of T1 units. Very nice. Right-hand side is looking a little shaky. A lot of bots pushing in. There is a lot of railguns, though. These railguns definitely hurt. Just trying to check how much percentage it strips off each one of these each time it fires. Looks like it's about, oh, 20 or so percent. Hard to say. 25% it looks like. Maybe 15. Something around that range. Very dangerous, regardless. That's a funny way of dealing with that gunslinger. Paralyze it and eat it up. <laughs> Gotta dig a while, but I suppose it works. This is something that I always preach. I want to show that I practice whatever I preach. Got these uh, hounds and handed them over here. Handed them over to Reed Suite so that there was essentially nothing I had to... Nothing I had to micro in the back line there. Or on the front lines, rather. I could, I could worry about microing in the back lines while I was uh, not having to worry about microing in the front lines. Easy to spend all your APM worrying about units that you produce to save your teammates and then ending up not actually doing your job and building in the back line can be a tremendous boon to your team just to hand those units over. Help them out. Jamak is going all the way up to an APHIS already here. It feels early, but I guess with the way that the eco settings are set up, you really don't need all too much before you're ready for an advanced fusion reactor. These energy converters pumping out 16 metal per second. That's basically an entire starting economy. All the way up to a T3 economy, basically. We're jumping steps over and over all over the place, trying to find some sort of opening. Any available weak point. Nice ping over here. Jamak is realizing that there's a weak point right here. Good on him. I absolutely didn't realize that. Sent some of those uh, sprinters through earlier, and I probably should have sent a few more. Commander goes down over here on the right-hand side. Looks like that's the commander for Drago Ken. Falls to ruin. <laughs> Slowly but surely eating up that gunslinger. Not sure if it's worth that constructor's time, but good to see, regardless. And I'm about ready to step up the economy here. You can see me eating up this T2 lab right now. Getting ready to pump a whole bunch of metal into all sorts of economy over here. Getting the fusion reactor up and running, and you can see these guys now churning out metal left, right, and center. 32 metal coming out of the T1 energy converters. Don't see that all too often here. And I'm remembering my anti-nukes. I finally learned my lesson. <laughs> oh, we've got some fat boys out on the field here for MIP. That's quite nice. Yeah, fat boy's very, very daunting to go up against. Especially with hounds here. They're so sturdy that the hounds can't really kill them, at least not effectively. You need a tremendous amount of them, and every time they get a chance to fire, yeah, you're going to be whittling down those T2 pretty quickly here. The Hounds did do their job, though. They're, they were essentially made only to shut down that T1 push, and they did that tremendously. Now the T2 era is upon us, though, and they're starting to build up in significant number here. You can see there's a lot of Sheldon out on the field for MVP getting ready to mar march through with those. We've got a bunch of Resbots also over here. Quite nice. Oh, yeah, I actually catch those with some uh, ticks right now. Always nice when you manage to catch a couple of uh, Resbots for free. Always feels like an efficient trade. Do 
Mac is losing some forces on the front line over here. The bull is strong, but not that strong. Does go down. Overwhelming firepower here from these tigers. No one tiger does too much damage, but uh, when you get enough of them in tandem, there's just not a whole lot you can do. Tend to start going absolutely crazy. Well, here comes some fiends, though. Fiends definitely an excellent counter just for the fact that they can manage to run around without taking too many shots from those tigers. Tigers also balled up right now, making them a pretty much perfect target for those fiends. If they get us around, they can just burn them, burn across from all angles right there. Very difficult to deal with. Nicely done right there by the orange commander. Cage. Right hand side becoming complicated. We've got Sheldon moving in. We've got lightning tanks for support. We've also got fat boys moving out here as well. That's always nice to see. Negotiators firing their stealthy rockets all the way up into the air and down upon the enemy. Very, very cool to see. Spider bots coming out here too. That's quite nice. Yeah, I guess with these little hills over here, you might as well use those spider bots. If they get into trouble, they can just retreat back on top of the hill and there's no problem. If you uh, want to be aggressive, you can just push them down over the hills and then suddenly you're in the enemy base. Yeah, seems like a pretty good use of multi-legged aggression. Full-blown T2 defense coming up on this left-hand side. Making sure that those tanks can't push on through here. Frag Rock getting ready to contest that. Setting up for a proper late-game economy here. Yeah, you can see my advanced fusion reactor way, way slower here. Definitely a bit of a change of pace. When you're when you're going for these, getting the advanced fusion reactor up and running, the very first one is often very difficult, but after that, they just kind of spiral like crazy. But a friendly fire right there from the tick spam. Also a rattlesnake over here that's been contributing greatly. 16 kills on that bad boy's record. Pitbull also, now with 27 kills. Make it 28. <laughs> Probably the most valuable pit bull that I think I've ever seen. A little bombing run over here. Takes out a couple of wind turbines. Always nice. Reminds me that I meant to originally go into air. <laughs> oh, I even said something in chat. Get AA. My air isn't up yet. I think I smelled that there was a bombing run. I could feel it in my bones that there was going to be a bombing run any minute now. Starting up the, uh, the air lab here, queuing up some fighters, but didn't quite have it up in time. Luckily, not all, not, not all too much was lost here for the, uh, yeah, for that bombing run, but it was certainly a little bit sketch. Jamakis moving forward. Nice D-guns right there, shutting down so many of those tanks. Oh, that was like half that tank army goes down. Loses the commander to the remainder of the Tiger tanks, though. So many of them all over the place. They're gonna get those pinpointers here. Maybe even both of them. They're trying. Pitbull trying as well. Keeping this area clean. Very risky. There's some of those spider bots. Finally pulled over to this side. Gonna be firing away at whatever they can. In this case, it's gonna be a whole bunch of Sheldon. Sheldon and grunts. Oh, this is really nice. Oh, these spider bots are in such a tricky position right here. Yeah, they find the back line right on the well, right on the production centers right here. Shutting down the T2 lab would be huge. Yep, they fire into the back. They get some of that build power over there. That's quite nice. Fire another volley. Oh, they're trying. <laughs> Desperately trying. They do get the T2 lab right there, so that's really nice. Shuts down production for MIB right there. That's going to be a bit of a pain. Very tricky to deal with that. A bunch of spam coming out here as well, trying to uh, overwhelm the enemy in many directions at once. Setting up the T2 air lab here. Trying to, anyways. There you go. You can see the explosion of advanced fusion reactors, though. Once we had one, then two was easy, and once we had two, three was very light work. And now going into a uh, advanced bot lab here, the T3 experimental gantry. Very nicely done. Yeah, I mean, you can see with two, uh, sorry, with three advanced fusion reactors and all the metal extractors as well, the economy is already up to 300 metal per second, which is just tremendous. Yeah, there we go. We're putting together Razorbacks already. Getting those out and running. 20 minutes into the game. <laughs> right-hand side is crumbling quickly for the red team. 
Scorpion tanks are pretty cool. They've got little dual heat ray lasers on the front of them blasting away. They've also got a scorpion battery firing those condensed matter projectiles. They're quite good. Is bad in a whole lot of trouble. Two, three, four goes down, and that's the commander down, but the advanced fusion reactor is up over here as well. Well, it's almost up. 73% of the way up. Close, but I don't think there's going to be a cigar. Oslex also trying to hold in the front lines here. These ticks being such a pain. I think all this damage on these Sheldon has just been friendly fire. I'm, bet I'm betting this Czar, oh, maybe that Pulsar now up and running as well. Probably contributing greatly to the amount of damage over here on this, well, basically every unit. It's a nice double kill. Got a welder and a fat boy for its troubles. Nicely done. Very nicely done, by the way, by Mib, who's put those uh, welders on the front line here. The perfect solution to those those uh, ticks running forward. Definitely the right unit of choice for that. Unfortunately, losing the fusion reactor in the back here means there's no power for those welders. That is a bit of a bummer. Always tricky to balance that. Razorback's almost ready to hit the field over here on the left-hand side. We do have a little bit of anti-air, so at the very least, shuriken or anything like that are going to be shot out of the skies here, but it is a little bit of a tricky situation. Going for more advanced fusion reactors. Might as well. Right hand side. Looking like trouble, but there is a Razorback out here. Looks like it was handed over by Jamakis. Trying to use the Razorback here to shut down all of this spam that's coming across. And for what it's worth, it will do a decent enough job. Yeah, it's gonna be gonna be difficult for this T1 to go up against the Razorback here. Even the T2 is gonna struggle. Those Razorbacks are something else. Definitely very powerful. Razorbacks over here though, a significant issue. I remember my response was immediately to pull up a whole bunch of these stilettos, try and make a whole bunch of stiletto bombers, send them on over in that direction. Pretty much the only thing that I could think of as far as how to solve this issue. Not really a solution, I guess you should say. More of just a uh, kind of a, a band-aid on the problem. And a whiff. <laughs> Loses two EMP bombers and gets essentially no work done. And another whiff. <laughs> oh no. Somebody has got to take away my uh, stiletto bomber privileges here. That was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Dragon's coming over here as well. Built by DSA, who's trying to actually solve the problems here rather than just uh, look pretty well. Not actually solving anything. Finally, I think I built enough EMP bombers that I could actually do anything. Effectively stun some of these. There we go. <laughs> Finally stunning some of those Razorbacks and allowing for a little bit of a defense, a mounted defense of some sort here. Fiend so difficult to deal with. Oh, oh, DSA with the killer D-guns, nice. Managed to D-gun down two of those Razorbacks right there. EMP bombers accidentally shutting down Fragnarok's production over here. Bit of a, bit of an issue. Oh, oh Razorback. Razorback. Oh, Razorback takes down the commander here for Fragnarok. That's tough. Yeah, when you're in that position where you're essentially handling two lanes all, all at the same time, playing for two players with one player's APM. Very tricky. Yeah, very, very difficult to deal with that. I couldn't think of an elegant solution, so my, uh, my plan was just to send welders and send them in bulk. <laughs> that was the, uh, the, the Hail Mary that we were going for here. EMP bombers at the very least shutting down a whole lot of these uh, these fiends and tanks and whatnot from coming back over here. Loads of resbots over here patching together tanks and sending them back. Very annoying to deal with. A nice play right there by Cage, using our own resources against us. Dragons up in the sky though, doing excellent work shutting down a whole lot of these tanks. Yeah, these experimental dragons are definitely a whole lot better at dealing with, well, basically anything. This, uh, this this modification definitely turns them into something well worth obtaining. Welders here a significant problem though. Massive sharpshooter army now available here for retweet. Going to be going for some sort of a push over on this side. Yeah, we've got enough sharpshooters now that you, if you put some welders in front of them, it's going to be really hard to stop those. 
always a big fan of the Sharpshooter Army. Feels like it's a very, very easy way to take a tremendous advantage. Left hand side, uh, sorry, left hand side of the right hand side, aka where those resbots just exploded into smithereens, decimated right there by a whole bunch of uh, Shiva firing away wherever they choose. We do also have some Archangels in the back for anti air support, so that's always nice. Oh, another mammoth goes down. Yeah, these Shiva over here contributing a significant amount of firepower. Welders over on the left hand side. Very nice. Trying to help out. <laughs> Let me know how you feel about these games down below in the comment section. I'm never exactly sure how I should uh, how I should deal with commentating these games. I can sort of remember what happens. I can sort of not remember what happens. It's always a little bit of a trick. There we go. Oh, just barely missed the D-guns. Unfortunate. Razorback eventually will be dealt with here by the sharpshooters that were pulled over to the left-hand side. EMP bombers truly the unit of all time. Shutting down effectively all of those T3 right there. Very, very annoying to deal with, I have to admit. Right-hand side. Yeah, those Shiva. They keep pushing in. EMP bombers across the face of this army over here, trying to paralyze some of it. Mammoth's very resistant to EMP, though. Very difficult to paralyze those bad boys. Wanted to get some sort of value out from these EMP bombers before they were uh, lost to the Oblivions. Don't think I quite got it, though. Yeah, a lot of these units, very resistant to EMP. Didn't really have anything to push in here, either. Sharpshooter's doing a great job of whittling a lot of this away. Tricky to deal with. Creating problems for the enemy team to solve. Aren't I just such a nice guy? <laughs> Shiva getting dangerously close to the advanced fusion reactor. Oh, if they just step forward, there they go, firing away their missiles, and there goes some of those heavy plasma projectiles. Advanced fusion reactor pops, and there goes the major economy right here for Isbad on the back lines. Yeah, it's going to be the air lab going down right there. Left-hand side, looking a little bit better at this point, but there are some Thors up in the air. Those are very, very dangerous to deal with. Welders all over the place. The scattered remains of what once was a mighty civilization. Shiva also contributing a whole lot of bulk on the front line here. Mammoth is so difficult to deal with, though. Sharpshooter is absolutely the right idea as far as the uh, efficient way of solving those, but still doesn't feel like a perfect solution. Little dogfight going on over here. There we go. <laughs> Dragon's able to shoot those down. Got a whole bunch of, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of Thors moving in on this left-hand side. Demon going to be pulled over here to try and deal with that. Going to be blasted apart. Oh, brutally here. Dragons, I think, going to be a much better solution to this problem. There they go. Those lumbering fortresses moving in to do some real damage. Razorbacks building on the left-hand side. I distinctly remember being worried about this, seeing one or two of these Razorbacks over here and realizing, wait a second, he's about to jump on top of you with these sharpshooters, but I didn't know how to give the call out in time. Yeah, those Razorbacks are building in great number, getting ready to jump on top of the Sharpshooter. Little, little over-ambitious with the push here. To be fair, that is a gargantuan amount of Sharpshooters. 24 Sharpshooters, certainly enough to clear away most T3. There's just barely not enough scouting in front. They couldn't burn down those Razorbacks, and in a blink of an eye, all of the Sharpshooters are gone right there. Oh, that is brutal. Would have been an excellent place for a bunch of EMP bombers, that's for sure. <laughs> now, there is one distinct advantage to having these dragons in the sky, I noticed, and it's the fact that when the dragons are up there, units, well, air units specifically, will virtually always try and target the dragon, and so any air forces that you have then, uh, yeah, are going essentially for defense. They're going to be, they're, well, they're, yeah, they're going to have no issue whatsoever shooting down the enemy fighters that are all focusing on the dragons. Makes the dragons a very, very efficient way of, yeah, keeping your your air units safe. A weird kind of way of doing that, but very efficient. Karganath reduced and sent over on this side of the map. Trying to climb up on those hills, those T3 spider bots. T3 gantry is up. 
and I decided this was the day. We were finally going to take advantage, or we were going to take uh, inspiration, rather, from the match that we saw just recently. I think it was the very last video. The rumbling. <laughs> I definitely wanted to play with some Titans, see if I could find a more efficient way of using them. For how harshly I bagged on the, I believe it was the yellow player of that game for. Yeah, misusing the Titans. I wanted to see if I could do any better here, so I start producing Titans as quick as possible. After some economy, of course. Important to keep the economy booming. Above all else. Beyond all else. Including reason. Hornets. A decent solution to Karganeth. Karganeth do have that anti-air missile though, so... They would have been able to shoot these down eventually here, but the fighters will be able to clean all the rest of that up very nicely. Razorback push on the right-hand side also looking quite dangerous. How many do we have in total? 12 Razorbacks in total. Gonna be difficult to stop here, especially for Humblegar, who does not have a de-gunnable commander, a commander with the de-gun, I should say. Those Cortex command, or sorry, those Legion commanders do upgrade to get pretty bulky towards the end of the game, but definitely don't have, not having that de-gun means they can't really compete with this T3 army. Juggernaut is out, though. Should be pretty nice for dealing with a lot of this. Yeah, down goes the commander over here. Juggernaut doing its very best, though, using that laser beam to blast apart whatever it can. Those uh, riot cannons on its arms also firing away here. Is it, what are those called again? I guess just Gauss Cannon. Not bad. Quite tricky. Razor back here. Being blasted apart by the cacophony. <laughs> that uh, chain gun actually surviving right here. Four kills to its name, but surviving a T3 onslaught. Pretty impressive for a T1 defensive structure. Can't lie. Massive demon wave moving over on the left-hand side, though. Don't think anybody on my team has spotted it quite yet. First Titan is on the field. Although maybe not. No, actually, it's the second Titan. First Titan was handed over already. Sent to Sir Ice Cream so that he could go defend his border. No, sorry, sent to Humblegar so that he could go defend his border. He's also got a Praetorian out. Praetorian, very cool. Epic Gundam neck. <laughs> it's got quite a lot of funky weapons on it. It's got a railgun, it's got a Gauss cannon, it's got two twin uh, laser cannons. I don't know what exactly we call them, but it's a very, uh, very cool weaponry on that bad boy. A diverse array of weaponry, you could say. Well, huge D-guns, huge D-guns right there. Cleaves through a massive portion of those demons over here. Still a lot of them going to be carving their way through on this side. A couple of titans being pulled, sent across over to the left-hand side. These demons are essentially uncontested right now. This is not good. Three demons trying to punch their way through the uh, red defensive line right now. I think I'm going to keep my eyes over here, though. Demons trying their very best. Dragons have been flying back and forth, desperately trying to keep this all together. Very desperately. <laughs> Here come the Titans. There they go, saving the day. Trying to, at the very least. Down go the demons. Dragons versus demons. Here we go. Starfall started up here by Reed Sweet. Realizes, wait a second, we need a late game solution here. Things are things are starting to crumble on all fronts over here. The left hand side just got swept away over here. Tons of economy had just fallen. The demons lying on the ground being eaten up by DSA, trying to build some sort of functional economy. There I go, sending out a whole bunch of constructors over here. How many was that in total? 19? Not a lot. <laughs> Not very much in all reality. Sufficient anti-nuke all over the red base, by the way. Not like the nuclear option would be all too available here. Pulsar trying to shut down as much of this as possible. Uh, kills one of the demons at the very least. Will our hero Pitbull be able to do it? Well, it survives. <laughs> Barely survives the onslaught, but survives nonetheless. Everybody's guarding this. We have to keep it alive. It's time for a Hail Mary play. Right-hand side also crumbling here. We do see a uh, commander going down. A couple of demons over there as well. Pushing through. Very expensive T3 army. Go, 
those dragons. So here's the thing, those, those dragons are targeted by all the fighters, right? It means that the other fighters, the, the defensive fighters, can now sweep in here and clean all the rest of this up with very little issue. Yeah, pretty, pretty impressive. Interesting sort of a defensive tool. Resbots patching everything together here. Demons and Titans and Thors, oh my. <laughs> uh, these matches get off to such a such a jump start as soon as we start getting into those late game economies just because there's so many epic units. Really, I feel like it's a pretty stellar way to balance the game because it means that everybody gets to play with their super heavy hitters a whole lot quicker. Our last hope. 93% of the way done. 10 seconds remaining on this bad boy. The trigger is pulled right here by the yellow player. Yellow and tan players both moving units across the field right here. Starfall is up and running. Oh, not enough energy though. There we go. Yeah, I started up a whole bunch of energy, energy containers. <laughs> Not sure how they scouted that, but apparently the red team did manage to scout that there was a starfall over here. Yeah, there we go. You can see starting up a whole bunch of energy banks and handing them over to Reed Suites so that he has enough power to actually fire everything. Pretty hilarious. Trying desperately to get this commander up to 300,000 energy. <laughs> And there he goes. Has enough to fire. Targeted directly into the middle of the red base. Oh, oh, and there he goes. Sends a volley. Right hand side crumbling as well. Demons pushing through. We have Karganeth marching up on the hillside right now. We have Razor Rags pushing in as well. Left hand side for us is completely crumbled. Starfields are, or star, Starfields. Starfall raining death from above right now. Trying desperately to, anyways. Need more power. Need more energy. Massive connection right there. Shuts down the entire economy for the red player. Jamakis loses his main base as the Starfield... The Starfield? The Starfall fires. Not sure what's wrong with me today. Keep, uh, keep mixing up the star, Starfall with the Starfield. Haven't even played that game. Is it worth it? I've heard, uh, I've heard some negative reviews. Magus's main base falls. Starfall has also been neutralized, though. Demons over here to try and contest these, uh, or, uh, dragons, rather, to contest the demons over here on the left-hand side. Sorry, I'm so scatterbrained today. I guess that's what streaming for six hours will do to a fellow. That was a, uh, expensive hit right there, though, to the red players. The red team, in, in total. Losing that much eco essentially balances the game again. Suddenly, this game becomes a whole lot, whole lot closer. Resbots pulled over here as well. Gonna try and resurrect this. Slowly but surely. Thors were resurrected on the left hand side. Why was I building Marauder? Can't can't remember why I was building Marauder. <laughs> Trying to resurrect though as quickly as possible. The Resbot army. Put it back together, lads. Rebuild him. Stronger than ever before. Razorbacks catching a whole bunch of anti-air bots over here. I think these were probably looking to take out the dragons on the next big push. Don't think they were expecting to encounter a whole bunch of res uh, or a whole bunch of Razorbacks over there. Very tricky. A lot of Razorbacks on this left-hand side as well. Bright, you should submit this to the Discord. <laughs> Yeah, I won't lie, there was a, uh, a sudden backlash as soon as this, this match was concluded to uh, cast this one, so here you are. Hope you all enjoy. Looking at it from a different angle is pretty interesting. I definitely felt like this was a lot more slanted in, uh, in their favor. Now that I'm looking at it, we were definitely losing there for a good long while. That first volley from the Starfall was enough to balance the scales here, but it definitely wasn't as one-sided as it looked like. Still really interesting regardless. Starfall. Almost finished again. 91, 92, 93. Almost done. Resurrecting. There it goes. Somehow I actually inherited it. I have no idea how it calculates that, but I guess it's just whoever puts in the most uh, resurrection at one time ends up with the, the unit or whatever. So anyway, I ended up with the Starfall. 
I was pretty excited about it, I won't lie. <laughs> pretty happy to get to play with this bad boy. Razorbacks have been pulled away from this left-hand side, conveniently exposing this area of the map, meaning that these three Razorbacks marched on through and took down all of the defensive structures over on this half. Demons built in mass to go deal with that. Yeah, those Razorbacks not going to last very long under that demon fire. Very potent. Big old Marauder run by as well, though. I figured might as well use some of that speed. Marauder stepping on through. Finding some sort of an advantage here. Could have done a little bit better splits here, not gonna lie. Lost all those Marauder in the advanced fusion reactor explosion. Definitely not ideal. Doesn't matter, though. Starfall up and running and now raining down on the shielded bases over here. MVP'd in supreme disarray. <laughs> uh, what a what a beautiful thing. This thing can fire away from such a long distance. Almost complete map coverage over here, and there it goes. Raining down more and more over on this side. Wanna wanna select it so I can see the total effective range. Yeah, you can see this thing reaching out almost the entire map right here. Starts raining down. Is there enough shielding? Barely. Barely enough shielding. Not going to be enough to save those energy converters over there, though. Yeah, it looks like the shields glanced that blow pretty nicely, actually, I would say. It's only the, only the beginning, though. <laughs> one by one, each volley is something else. Trying to contend with. Takes 300,000 energy in order to fire this thing, by the way. In case anybody was curious. Balanced? Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Powerful, certainly. Extremely. Sharpshooters blasting away this Karganeth over here. Very nice. Keeping that Starfall safe. Not willing to lose it once more. Down comes another volley. I want to catch this. Beautiful. <laughs> wow, that's so that's so cinemagraphic. Just the way that it all it all rains off the shields right there. Absolutely beautiful. Nice push right here. Thor takes out one of the advanced fusion reactors, and it was enough for the red team to finally hit the resign. What a match. Still uh, still fairly fresh in my brain, but man, what a riveting comeback right there. Starfall managing to throw the game back into our favor and eventually swing it and allow us to push in with T3. Very nicely done. GG to everybody involved, especially Jamakis. Thank you for letting me showcase one of the very, very few games in which you actually lose on the stream. <laughs> uh, we do have some good fun. I sure hope you enjoyed today's, today's video. I know it's a little unconventional, so... Bear with me there as I try to bring you some slightly different, but, but uh, you know, interesting content nonetheless. And I will see you in the very next Beyond No Reason video.